So let me just pick up on that point of the strikes. One of the labor unions, AMCU, has been on strike at Sibanye since November. It's now vowing to widen that action. Do you see any hope of compromise with the union? Yes, good morning. Um, Obviously, there is hope for compromise. I think uh, we can compromise as long as we don't undermine the other unions that have already signed a wage agreement. So um, I'm hopeful that in the not-too-distant future, because uh, I think you are seeing the desperation of the union trying to involve a broader industry, which I don't believe they can do legally. Um, But certainly we, we have proposed some compromises. And I think that we we can look forward to the strike ending in the not too distant future. Neil, you are faced with the challenge of really restructuring this business. We've got headlines that up to six thousand jobs could go. What is the reality uh, of this restructure? Is it really going to be as many jobs as that to right size the business? Um, I'm hopeful that it is not uh, a, a total of 6,000. Um, when, we, when we make announcements, uh, and, and we have to do it in line with the, the 189 section of the, the Labor Relations Act, we have to put out what is the total potential number of affected jobs. The 189 process is really a process to find alternatives to retrenchment. And our experience in the past where we've run these sort of processes a number of times is that the number of final retrenchments is a lot less than the total number of affected people. And and one of the main reasons is that if you transfer a person from an unprofitable shaft to a business unit that is profitable, they are affected, but they don't lose their job uh, in the, in the uh, process. So... So it is, it is a harsh number, but it is a reality, and, and there is a possibility that 6,000 people could lose their jobs. But uh, I'm hopeful that that will not be the, the outcome. Okay, so you're hopeful that it won't be the outcome, but it is still possible. Let me ask you about M&A, uh, Neil. I'm wondering what your appetite is for more M&A after the Lomin deal is completed. Um. You know, our approach to M&A has been about finding the right opportunity to enter a commodity or a specific area of the business. Um, And and to some extent, to create value, you've got to be counter-cyclical. You've got to have a strong balance sheet when other people don't. Um, You've got to see the potential for a commodity when most uh, most investors and uh, um, our competitors don't. And that's exactly what we did with our move into PGM. So that was a very aggressive phase. We've got a highly leveraged balance sheet because of that, so we need to get that back under control. In terms of future M&A, I think we are busy now developing um, our strategy and and getting the next um, concept uh, in place. And you would have seen with our results announcement today, we we announced that we're acquiring a, a small consultancy firm um, SFA Oxford, based at Oxford University, who are experts in the development of, of powertrains and the metals associated with that. And, and we believe we will be able to take that intellectual knowledge and find the next gap in the market. Just to, to say one other thing, the, uh, the current fashion in the gold space about there's going to be lots of M&A, in my mind, is, is a dangerous place to think that you're going to create value. Um, you know, companies yes. will run competitive processes and so on. So, so we're not all, um, let's say, hyped up about doing M&A in the gold space at the moment.